Man Machine Profiles, Episode 6, The Vehicles of Gaia Gear. In the era of the UC-200s, man machines reign supreme. These walking weapons of war have outclassed and overshadowed their mobile suit forebears and taken over their place as the apex weapon of this new era. But these terrifying mechanical beasts are supported by a swathe of new vehicles that have been introduced alongside them. These vehicles fleshing out the world of Gaia Gear and expanding its world for those of us who experience it. What I have here are a list of these vehicles, all of which appear in the radio drama of Gaia Gear, starting with the smallest and most most bite size, the Elicar electric powered reconnaissance and attack motorbike. The Elicar motorcycle may seem like an average bike, but be aware there are two variants of this small scout vehicle an unarmed version, used for simple off road conditions and uneasy terrain, as well as a specialized variant used by the forces of Metatron, one that incorporates a heavy machine gun mounted to the steering handles. Since the bike is electric, the sound its engine produces is quite minimal, a feature that serves Metatron well, as the bike is often used by ground forces of Metatron and the patrol of its militia forces, with some larger vehicles like the Air Force class carrier having special compartments for storing them to allow for easy access. Pushing Nug, man machine mobile service and repair platform. Designed to act as both a mobile base and repair station for the Manhunters, the Pushing Nug was a vehicle used by the Manhunters during the days of their landing operations into Europe, as well as into the days following their coup. The Pushing Nug is a sturdy vehicle, with four massive caterpillar tracks that allow this vehicle to travel from battle line to battle line. It possesses several beam cannons and anti-air missile systems for self-defense, and possesses a carrying capacity of three standard man machines on the vehicle's flatbed section. When the vehicle finds a suitable location, the vehicle can be easily converted into a mobile outpost for man machines and manhunter forces alike, with a crane section at the rear to allow for easy repairs to man machines who require service. There are even some smaller variants of the bushing nug designed to carry a single man machine. However, these units do not possess the proper defensive capabilities on like its larger brother. Spacius, Mineral Extraction Freighter, a vehicle used by Metatron Captain Madracalia. The Spacius is his personal ship. The original vehicle was once a mining vessel. However, the Spacius has had its inner workings overhauled so that it can serve Metatron as a clandestine smuggling vehicle. The interior can carry two man machines in its cargo hold, with plenty of space left for crew members and Metatron agents alike. Air Force Carrier, Man Machine Mobile Assault Carrier. The Air Force class is actually a very interesting type of vehicle. Its design and function pays homage to the Garada and Gao class of VTOL carrier ships of the days of old, but this somewhat smaller ship actually can hold quite the hidden arsenal within its hull. These ships possess missile launchers, beam cannons, machine guns, and crew-operated turrets. It has a specialized man-machine retrieval system, one that utilizes an extending claw and latching system to allow for units to be picked up and placed inside of the hull as the unit flies. The units are then laid horizontally within the ship's hold. This small ship actually has an impressive capacity for being so small. Just shy of 10 man machines can fit inside this ship, a quite impressive carrying capacity for something so small. Metatron is known to have employed many of these carriers throughout their war with the Manhunters, three of which were present at the opening battle against the Manhunters in the upper atmosphere above France. However, only one vessel is said to have survived the entire war. Cuselin Class, Federation Battle Cruiser. The hallmark vessel of the EFSF of the UC 200s, the Cuselin class is an impressive piece of engineering. These ships are quite common. It has one of the most interesting designs for a Federation vessel. These ships possess three large, four-barrel anti-ship beam cannons, several anti-air missile and turret systems, and the last and most interesting feature, a small man-machine hangar placed at the ship's rear, with an entire catapult deck positioned on the ship's underside. The ship's bottom armor allowing for adequate protection from enemy attacks as the man-machines launch from within the ship. Universal Carrier, Mobile Man Machine Carrier Vessel. Often a ship seen alongside the Cuselin class, the Universal Carrier serves as the workhorse vessel when it comes to man machine support. The ship possesses two massive mobile suit hangars along its sides, with four sliding hatches for support craft and other vehicles to launch from. The ship has an elevator system that brings the ship's man machine complement to the outer launch deck. The ship possesses four side catapults for rapid deployment. It is unclear of the capacity of the ship, but judging by the size of the catapults and the visual 
visual length of the ship, the vessel most likely has a capacity of somewhere in between 16 to 20 man machines. Mother Metatron, heavy assault carrier. Also going by the codename of the 31 Squared, the Mother Metatron serves as the main mobile star fortress of the Metatron Resistance, the ship's size, arsenal, and man machine capacity being one of the largest of the era. A 30 man machine capacity is within this ship. Four double barrel anti battleship beam cannons, eight large heavy missile launchers along the ship's main hull. These missiles can be equipped with extremely powerful low yield Minovsky particle vaporization warheads, with a theoretical blast radius of two kilometers per missile. It is unclear how many missiles the Mother Metatron possesses, nor how they procured them towards the end of the war, but an absurd amount of these warheads would be seen used in the war's closing battle between the Manhunters and the Metatron forces. The Mother Metatron also possesses four hyper megaparticle cannons for dealing with enemy space fortresses. These massive megaparticle cannons can incinerate entire asteroids with ease. And finally, as an interesting feature, the ship possesses an artificial gravity generating gyro ring along its aft, with its engines and hyper megaparticle cannons located in separate pieces of the ring for easy detaching and separating in the event of an emergency. And finally, the largest vessel found within Gaia Gear's story, the Geijisu class, Mobile Fortress Assault Landing Ship, one of the largest warships ever constructed by human hands. The Geijisu is a vessel that can't really be considered a warship, more like a weaponized space colony. The Geijisu is the largest vessel under the command of the EFSF and the Manhunters. The ship possesses a capacity of over a hundred man machines, with the ship's additional storage compartments being able to house hundreds of vehicles and other pieces of spare equipment. The ship is so large, it possesses service halls spread across the entire ship that allow for entire man machines to navigate the inner workings of the vessel, with hangars, repair bays, and refueling stations positioned all throughout the ship's hull. The ship is armed with dozens of anti-air, anti-man machine, and anti-battleship defense systems, as well as a series of M-barrier generators positioned in key locations to protect vital sections of the ship, such as the bridge and reactor section. The entire ship is propelled by a series of colossal Minovsky craft flight systems positioned around the ship's underbelly. This colossal ship would serve as the main headquarters vessel of the Manhunters before and after the coup against the Federation. However, this gargantuan vessel would be shot down and leave a fiery inferno in its wake as it crashed into the Bavarian countryside at the end of the war. And as a series of honorable mentions, the Koiter Pei and Koi Lo man machine assault ships. Appearing in only the novels of Gaia Gear, these two vessels actually serve as twin motherships of the Hong Kong Manhunter Division. These ships participated in the conflict alongside the Manhunters during the European landing operations, as well as during the coup. However, these ships would mainly be destroyed towards the end of the war, the two vessels being sunk near and around the final battle between the Manhunters and Avarachi Shar's Metatron forces. Minox, Minovsky craft VTOL aerospace craft, a small two-seater assault aircraft built for use in space colonies, the Minox is a Manhunter VTOL aircraft built for the agency's crowd control operations. This small vehicle was designed to fly within and maintain the airspace of space colony interiors. However, it has the ability to operate in a limited zero-gravity environment if necessary. These small patrol vehicles can be outfitted with low-power explosives and tear gas launchers for riot control, with some units having the option of being outfitted with missile launchers and thermite bombs for dealing with enemy controlled structures and fortifications. The Minox would be used often by Manhunter law enforcers when dealing with large crowds and smaller Metatron controlled fortifications and facilities. And finally, the Valkyrie, man machine marine carrier ship. In the radio drama of Gaia Gear, the Gaius piloted Cross Hansen Squadron arrives by land to aid the Metatron forces in the battle against the Manhunters. However, in the books, the group actually arrives by sea. The Valkyrie is the name of the naval ship that carried the Gaiuses to Europe. It doesn't appear in the radio drama, but nonetheless plays a pivotal role in the novel's continuity, as it serves as the Gaius's mothership during the war against the Manhunters on the ground. The Vehicles of Gaia Gear, a collection of interesting and unique vehicles from the age of the UC-200s. Man-machines might be the face of this story, but these ships are absolutely its backbone.